Whether you've been in Spain for six months or six years, don't miss Payathair and Aredia in conversation with Moody on Bay Radio every other Wednesday at 10 a.m. Payathair and Aredia are your international lawyers on the Costa Blanca and have been looking after the expat community for more than a decade. See more at alicantelawyers.es. Here we are for Wednesday then, so every other Wednesday, joined by our friends from Payathair and Aredia, Amal Gardos, and it's been a while since we spoke to Ignacio. Welcome yeah. back. Good yeah. morning. Yeah. Thank you very much. Buenos nice to see you. Buenos dias, Moody. No, it is a thing. I nearly caught up with you at the weekend because you went to the football. Yes, that's which right. Which is um, Hercules. You're, you're a fan as well. Yes, that's Pe- right. Pe- we've spoken to Pedro the last couple of times um, you, you know, for your sessions here. <laughs> and uh, yes, he invited me along. Couldn't make it on Sunday, but um, you shared a two-goal thriller with yeah. Teruel. Right? Yeah, yeah, Teruel. <laughs> Teruel against um, we had a good time. Yeah. Yeah, we had a good. It's a pity because they play very well. Better luck next time, and hopefully I'll make it along. We'll try. So to make you've it. been busy, I guess, in the last uh, few times, not been able to make it in uh, court and all yes. of that. I yeah. would think. You know, it's difficult. What sort of things are you dealing with at the moment? Bit of everything. Yeah, a bit of everything. Yeah, because um, sometimes the problem is on Wednesday. If I have another hearing or another appointment, or you know, I couldn't make it. But the good thing is, Pedro and Antonio are here sometimes on Wednesdays as well. So um, that makes it easier, doesn't it? And are you saying uh, a court case for one of your clients is more important than coming on the radio? Yeah, well, I, it's, let's call it is a big commitment. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we we have a, a court. Actually, I'm having one on Thursday about uh, claiming money against a bank, claiming against ah, right. uh, Savadell, actually. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's a long story. It's a long story. It's an inheritance and money, cancellation of bank accounts without right. so the client agreeing, but they just could cancel your bank account. And, and the client couldn't find where the money was. And, you know, it's like knocking on the door and nobody there and nobody will tell you how to get their money back, basically. Wow. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, this lady was from 2000, if I believe, 2018. Mm. That's how they cancelled the contract, right? Which is fine because it's a, it's a contract is got to be worth for two parties, but they should have done okay. Cancel the contract. Here is your money. Come and collect it or tell me where to transfer. As simple as that. Mm. But the story was that they made the guy ill, very you know, with heart problems, and he was very ill. And that's the next one we're having on Thursday in Alicante Court. But I think it will be cancelled because of the strike. Ah, there is a strike on secretaries of courts. Uh, I don't know if you heard, and the whole courts now, or pretty much most of them, are on strike. Oh. So they are cancelling every every day. Um, I think they said 50,000 hearings a day. Oh, wow. Wasn't there a backlog anyway? So it's, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be even worse. Even worse. Wow. So COVID didn't help neither. No, and, of course. And now no. it seems they've got, they've got an appointment now on Friday to have to try to reach another negotiation. Or something, because mm. last time I heard that was last week. They stay very late at night and they just walk away. Yeah. yeah. So That's I really don't know. Is it's just up to them, you know? Is the, the secretaries wants to get paid more? Um, I don't know much about it, but they want to just get a salary similar or equal than the judge. And, wow. um, well, and it, I um, mean, it's kind of happening everywhere. It's because of the, the cost of living, you know, inflation. You're trying wages, trying to keep up with you know, the increase in prices and everyone wants it, but uh, sometimes the money isn't there, especially they in the do pu- a lot of public work. sector. Yeah, They yeah. do a lot of work. I agree. Uh, secretaries are overwhelmed. Courts are overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. And I think the government should budget more money for uh, justice, to be honest, because it's our life, isn't it? It's, it's, you, know, you have a problem, you want quick solution, don't you? Yes. And uh, you probably come to expect that it takes uh, a few years, some of these cases, to come around and finally get to... To court, and if we're talking about inheritance and and, and splitting the inheritance money, he will, will take forever. Mm-hmm. You know, is especially especially if you need to notify more people abroad or uh, not contested wills uh, with no parties. You know that you make a will, and um, nobody knows where he is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there are more partners of the will. There are more beneficiaries. And you need to start finding and looking for them. Otherwise, you cannot sell. Mm. 
So, so inheritance is a big, big thing as well. But you, anyway, it's, it's court, court issues. Anyway. Yeah, sure. It's just an example of the sort of things you do. It's in a variety of stuff. A variety. Um, I'm busy. But especially dealing with, you're still dealing with this residency and uh, yeah. visas and the like, yeah. big part of what you do. Did you see about, um, and I don't know, you wouldn't want it to go this way, I wouldn't think, but about golden visas maybe being scrapped? No, no, no. You don't, I don't, you don't I think don't. so in Spain? No, in Spain, I know Portugal has been, has been faster on granting golden visa and um, and the tax benefits, which probably you read, and now they're removing that because yeah. they they have like a different world, you know, is some people that uh, cannot afford living and, and these people raising the price of the property and everything. So I could understand that happening. And they did their objectives, or you know, they, they did already achieve their, their objectives, which was bringing money into the country. Mm. But, uh, but I, I don't think so. However, um, Noma Visa, which is very attractive now, yes, just started, just is kicking off now. That and, is in, uh, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Because uh, we, we discussed that the last couple of times with uh, yeah, with Pedro. Pedro yeah, Antonio, Pedro yeah. probably told you a lot about Noma Visa mm. because uh, we're dealing with a lot of these cases, and that's bringing a lot of uh, uh, people coming over, uh, bring money into the economy. I don't think that much in uh, buying a property. I think to start with, a nomad will not buy a property. Will start renting. Yeah, renting. Yeah. And then if they fall in love with the comp- uh, with the with the country or the city, or they might eventually uh, buy a property. Mm. But that's that's really um, the good thing is they're giving a good treatment and they spend money in Spain, which brings money. So. Um, it's cheaper, the taxation for them than for any of you, myself, or anybody else. So the, the lucky ones. Yes. Is it um, a flat rate, though? 20, yes. 24%? Yes. Or, yeah. Yes, 24%. Um, and and that's very good. And I think it is up to five years or six. I cannot remember now from the top of my head. Right. But they could extend. So, you know, is it's, You have to do the do it one year initially. Yes. Yeah. And then and, maybe renew. And then you're them. renewing. Yeah. And uh, but the good thing, uh, Moody, if you get everything sorted and organised, you lodge it through when you come. So you come with a tourist visa. Mm-hmm. We already prepare all paperwork. So when you come here, we lodge it through the Alicante Strangery Office. So you don't need to deal with the consulate, um, all the fees for the consulates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, nah, which sure. is the non-lucrative visa you must do it from the consulate. Right. The golden visa you don't need necessarily do it through the consulate. We don't recommend, if possible, we could avoid consulate. I think it's better because mm. uh, they always rely on a strong area. They are just uh, like a diplomatics office and they're not that used to it. You know, they're, they're, not, they're not specialists. I mean, they do a lot of things. So, so if you could avoid uh, the queuing as well over there. And, yeah. You know, and from what um, Pedro uh, told me, that it's pretty quick. It can go through like the yes. golden visa. Golden visa, five, tw- five give it 20 days from lodging. Yeah, really? 20 days yeah, from lodging. Through. And uh, the new digital nomad visa, pretty quick as well. Pretty, pretty quick as well, but it's place. harder. For, it's, yeah. The process is harder to get the paperwork in order because you need a lot of bits and pieces of a lot of places, for example. You need a paperwork from, from your boss. You need to prove that they've been working more than a year. Then you need to prove that you are either self-employed. or So it's putting paperwork together. Golden visa, you buy and, and, and then, yeah, well, you need to have the health insurance, non-criminal records, well, a, a lot of things as well. But, but it's quite straightforward. Um, and um, Noma Visa brings a good thing as well of the, uh, of the taxation. You know, that's that's yeah, that's that's very uh, beneficial, advantageous. Yeah. Uh, but um, with the no digital nomad visa, you do need to be earning, and you need to be earning. Yes. A certain amount. Yes, or, yes. They won't, they won't allow you, no, you to can't just, come no, and, just come and, and start from zero. Get by. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah but, but details on that, you have done a webinar on that. Yes, you? yes. So that's, and, that's in a previous one. And in our website, if they just click, uh, they will see what we do, immigration, and then you click there and it says Noma Visa. And you have a whole bunch of uh, questions and answers already there with all their requirements and, and the videos. So it's very, very... Comprehensive. Yes, so everything's uh, always worth checking on the website. So easiest if you're uh, English speaking, alicantilawyers.es will get you there. Otherwise, paythanradia.com. First appearance of 2023, new office and all. We talked about this, uh, the opening of the new office in Casado, right? Mm-hmm. That was really... a great, great opening. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. all up and running, all running smoothly, yes. I'm sure. Yes, yes. But you were, already, you were already in the area there, yes. weren't you? Fun. We were very close. We were probably 100, 100 metres 
uh, away from from the new office, but now it's really the center, and uh, we just moved because. Uh, you know, when when you rent, you don't know whether you're going to renew and renew and renew. And the small office might be too small, you see. Uh-huh. And um, it, it it took a, a long time to to find the right place and the right spot. But now it's great. Yeah, you when know? you when you know, you know. So that, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one for us. Yes, yeah, that's, that's the one. Good. And it, and it's it's easy to park all around. There are parkings. So so I think it was a good move. You know, a good move. And since we are. More lawyers involved and more yeah. service. At the end of the day, it, it, the beauty of it is for the clients because because it's a better service, better, bigger office, more comfort. Because hmm. so, you can do a lot online these days, obviously, yes. but people still like to come in and see yes. you at the office. And you you know that's where you hold official meetings and the like and get people sitting down. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the video conference it did work very very well because you could be sorting a problem when somebody is abroad. Mm-hmm. And saving them the trip to come over here, going back, expenses, etc., is not really the same because the video conference is not really the same as personal. You know, I always prefer more personal. It's better. Yeah. You know, but it works. It sure. works, and and we do a lot of consultations on video conference, especially uh, immigration and tax, because you know people planning to come and relocate themselves. They want to know, so they they will contact us and say, "How much would I pay with these figures?" Right. And these, and and that's specific. That's a good thing, and then they give us all the information, and then we spend an hour consultation with them, uh, the accountants and myself or Pedro, and giving advice best way through, and exactly the same we do with immigration now. You know, it's a mixture because, well, especially Norma visa brings a lot of beauty of the low taxation. Yep. And uh, but always a question: what is best, uh, non-resident, resident, and uh, every case is you know every case is different. Yeah, sure. And talking of residency, this will still be going on. I would imagine that people trying to get their their TIE. And, uh... I still have uh, Moody. I still have cases, and you will be surprised. About Brexit TIE. Yeah. So you say, yeah, are you still going on with this? Yes. Mm. Well, and because uh, this, is, this has come up, this is most recent post on your uh, Facebook page. Yes. Um, and uh, the reminder that uh, if you're third country national, you must have lived in that country for at least five years. Yes. To, to about uh, permanent, to renew. You're yeah. talking about renewing. Because uh, now we're going to face a lot of people, if we remember, was the end of 2020. Mm-hmm. And in 2025, will be probably a lot of people are starting to renew their residency. You remember the green card that right. turned into the TIE. Mm-hmm. They gave him five years. But some people say, well, I have my green residency from 2015 or, or 16, 17, right? But I just got my TIE for five years. But if you could prove that you've been more than five years already, even though the expiring date of the TIE doesn't say you need to renew it, you could go and ask for permanent. Right. Permanent is pretty straightforward, Mm. but it gives you a lot of freedom. I mean, you don't need to have, um, technically, the the six months, because once you have the residentia, technically you should stay here during the five years, half of the term, so six months per year. And uh, with that permanent, you could... Uh, come in and out as you like, uh, mm-hmm. as as a Spaniard, basically. Okay, mm. and um, most people that swapped over from the the big green A four sheet, they would have got the permanent yes permanent residency. If you've been more than, if you or any of the listener uh, audience um, have more than five years mm. with their residency, it doesn't matter whether it's green one because Moody probably you already have the TIE. Yeah, I'm just looking at mine now. This, but I, you need to remember about the green one you had before because that's uh, a starting my, date, not this. Yeah, one. no. Oh, Oh, right, but this, yes. this is uh, this is um, a ten year one. I, I, oh, it's a ten year because yeah, you've yeah. been here long enough. Mm. Yeah, so you are permanenter, so you could. That's yeah. You pretty much could do whatever enough. you like. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> in I do, and, out. and I do obviously. <laughs> <laughs> But still, you've got people, you know, trying oh, to go yes. through this process. I, I, yeah. I still feel sorry for a lot of people who've been very unlucky uh, for different circumstances. For example, the insurance. Yes. They're so stubborn, these administration with the, with insurance. This is health oh, the, insurance. The health insurance. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the health insurance, you managed to get that one after Brexit. Yeah, but the law doesn't say anything that you should have the, the insurance pre-Brexit. It doesn't say. Mm. And I already have sentence saying that. 
but they are so stubborn uh, that they make our life difficult on, uh, okay, you start all over again. So we win the case and then you start all over again. And then they start saying another excuse or whatever. And, you know, I, I'm trying to narrow down the administration to, to, to the limit because it's, it's, it's ridiculous, to be honest. But some people still need to fight it. Mm. And, and how long can that take? So they get rejected for some sort of technicality, the Badron or health insurance. How long? Does the the it go I mean, again? some people. I'll tell you the different cases. Uh, some people who lodge their 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 petition, and it's being denied. Um, it's, uh, unfortunately, sometimes they even didn't even accept it. So that's illegal. Not accepting is wrong. You need to just have grounds and say denied, not an accepted. Mm. It's a technicality, you see, but some administrations say reject it. You cannot reject. You need to say, you need to run through the paperwork yeah. and say denied, okay? And then I could appeal through the courts and the judge could say uh, it's wrong and it should, should have been granted. However, if it's been rejected, the judge could only say start all over again, Yeah, which yeah. is even worse because now you're giving them another chance to, to tell you something ridiculous, which is what is happening. They're still going on with the health insurance. Yeah. And and these people here, they had insurance before Brexit, but probably was not the proper insurance, but they had the EHIC. So they they were insured. And they had another one afterwards, and they still go on and on and on. And uh, that hearing, um, sometimes I just, uh, you don't need to go to the hearing because it's only paperwork, but sometimes I, I really like to go there and tell them off a little bit because, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, you know. You've, you've had all sorts of uh, silly things, really, that come up, you know, slight technicality. Yeah. And it's yeah. obvious they've been living here for, yeah. you know, that many years. And um, I want to bring that to the attention of the judge mm. and say, listen, I have all these clients suffering all these mistakes and, and I plead the judge to pay at least for some legal cost. Yeah. You know, it's very hard to get that. Uh, but at least it's, 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 even though it's a principal thing, isn't it? Mm. Uh, but yes, some people still are going through the court cases with the TIE. Some people are going on their renewals. This is what we are having in the blog. Yes. Renewing your TIE now. Yeah, there's a video to go with that, so it explains everything. Yeah, um, if you, the problem I find here is changing the address. If you move from one, let's say you've got a TA and you change the address, you need to go through all the process again, wow. which is a bit tiring, yeah. a bit tiring in here. You know, for, for the clients, you know, because you need to prove that, yeah. everything again. Yeah, yeah. Um, so some people might leave it for renewing, and when they have to renew it, they will do it. Yes, probably. put the new address on. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, but that's on Residencia. Um, on, but the TIE, they, they, people who, with Golden Visa will end up having a TIE as well. Mm -hmm. And normal Visa TIE. So non-Europeans is always a TIE. Yes. De, de identificación de extranjero. Yeah. Identidad yeah. extranjero. Okay. And that's, uh, yeah, for a third country. Yes. Nationals. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're still keeping the same green cards for Europeans which you need to have your passport, as you used to do, and the green card. And that's pretty much um, the update from the, from the TIE. I love, um, Moody, a lot of family reunification. Mm. A lot of them are we doing. Uh, and, and, and that's great in a way because let's say you are Irish and your wife or partner, legal partner, mm -hmm. is British. Yep. The process is different. It's completely different. Because they're in, within the EU. Though. Correct. Yeah. It's a family member of a European citizen. Mm -hmm. And that's even, that's cheaper, faster, better, you know? I mean, okay, so, well, okay. so I always encourage people, say, if you have family from different countries, uh, even sometimes I, we have clients, American clients, that um, the partner is European. So yeah. life is different, you know? It life it, is, is it easier, much yeah. easier. Yeah. And um, so that's, we're having a lot. We're having a lot. And some people are asking as well whether they could bring their parents. That's more difficult. Right. Unless they are dependent and you could prove they are really dependent. Mm -hmm. That's the hard one. That's the hardest, I will say. But you've, 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 had to, you've tried to deal with those, those cases. I'm sure they've all come your way. I mean, uh, non-lucrative will be the, the, the way to do it. But if they're really a dependent, um, it's a hard one. Yeah. That's a hard process. Mm -hmm. 
It's something I asked uh, Antonio, I think it was, uh, the last time they were in. Have you had anyone kicked out? Did you know of anyone being uh, sent home? Right. Sent back to the That's UK? a big worry of, of a lot of people. Yeah. And, um, and as you know, you can never say, because you don't know tomorrow what could happen. We haven't seen that happening. We did see happening on the COVID times. They did reject, I remember, you remember, even on mm. the radio we said they were rejecting um, people because they were non-resident. So yes. they didn't have the residentia, they cannot come. But after COVID, I haven't seen enforcing that. No. You know, they're not, they're not very, very strict. Uh, and, and some clients saying, now I just walk through the passport control and they don't even look at me sometimes. But sometimes... You, you might have police um, checking. And, and another problem is some people come in and uh, they are in breach of the three months rule and they come back. So when you in the way back, they're, gonna, they're not going to tell you anything. But I cannot guarantee within the way back to Spain, they will say, you've been in breach, you're not allowed. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, I haven't the, seen that happening yet, but that could happen because they've got on their records all the information. Yes, quite. So this is something I say up to you. It's, it's your responsibility. You know, at the end of the day, you don't know what, what they could do. But, well, we know the law, but we don't know whether the policeman in there, he can stop you or, as some clients say, there is nobody there. No, right. So yeah, you, you it's take, risky. You're taking a your chance. You're taking a chance. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and if you are rationing your 90 days within 180 uh, that you can stay here, uh, forget to get your passport stamped when you come in and out so that they know you've left and... Uh, Come, 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 back, come back again so you can tell when you you know you haven't overstayed your welcome basically yeah but what do you mean well when you go through the airport when you get your make sure you get it stamped so you can prove that you left oh yes Spain. that's right that's yeah. right that's right uh, when you go through and uh, and some people as well have the problem coming in they don't if the place is not there they cannot stamp it mm. well it's very important they know or any, anybody who has this problem there is a police station inside the airport so if by any reason you're the lucky one that you don't have a passport control and you really need to prove for tax reasons or for immigration reasons um, because it's good to have it, you know, for, for certain evidence, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, try to, to find the police station downstairs in the Alicante airport and ask them, uh, you could do it, I think it's up to 48 hours or 72 hours from the day you, from the day you arrive. So I, I will I will ask people to do the same day while you're in the airport. Yes, of course. Because, yeah, you, you know, mm -hmm. later on I had a client, American client, who tried to do it and I would say, well, give a try afterwards, but the police will, will, won't accept it. So he had to go back to another country so he could have his stamp. There was no way around because he missed the stamp. Really? Yeah. yeah. I remember he, he flew, he went to Algeria. And oh, really? uh, then it's just back and forth uh, wow. on a weekend to yeah, get the passport stamp. Just to come back through the airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically went there, probably had a weekend, a good huh. weekend and came back because the police will reject it. The, the, the national police will reject it as well. And uh, there was no way around it. We, we were trying and trying and trying because he missed that. Yeah, that, that window stamped. to get it stamped, yeah. Yeah, right. so it's quite important, Modi. Mm. And it's if you are a resident, it doesn't really matter. You, you, I usually throw my card at them as soon as you, yeah. soon you go up to the, the booth there. But I mean, if, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If, if, if you're a resident exactly. and you really don't need any evidence to prove that you're being in and out for any tax no, purposes sure. or anything, it doesn't really matter. Just wrapping up with Ignacio from Paith and Radio. We actually had Janine come through on uh, WhatsApp when we were talking about the residentia there. Um, and she's been here since 1988. Got, you know, permanent resident. Permanent. So why does your card expire ten, in, after 10 years? <laughs> why it did it expire, she says? Well, well, same as mine. It's the expiry date, 2031. If you're permanent, why is it... Um, why does it come up for it? You need to renew it. Mm. You need to renew it every 10 years. Okay. As so simple that, as that. that, that I mean, it, she probably, see, she might even know Spanish very well. Hmm. If she knows Spanish, she could even apply for nationality and that's the end of it. She yeah, doesn't sure. need to, to, to renew the residencia anyway. But yes, uh, every 10 years you need to renew it. I suppose it's like your passport, yeah. Yeah, you but, but it's, it's pretty much straightforward. I mean, permanente is straightforward. Right. Uh, it's not a complex thing. Um, going into the TI is is uh, a little bit difficult nowadays. Uh, obviously, non-lucrative visa, golden visa, all these 
I mean, it's very hard to do it yourself, you know, yeah, yeah, dealing sure. with the appointments, dealing with the, with the no sense of certain things. Um, but, but yes, she'll have to renew every 10 years, mm. every 10 years, because she's a permanent resident. Um, otherwise, she will be irregular. Yes, well, you become a regular. Yeah, quite. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so, but it, it's fairly straightforward to do that. Yes, they yes. Make that I mean, a whole to do. Um, it, it's not a problem. I think probably you will need to get the pad wrong again. Um, new photo, uh, new form, new photo, and probably nothing else. Probably nothing else. No. You know, I'll be surprised. They ask you for. They will not ask you any financial means no. at all. Uh, and health, um, I don't think they will. They will ask you anything because you, you, she might be even in the system. So yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah uh, you could go so. even. You know that you have the health private, or you could go convenio especial, or you could go social security. So it's just Re pretty straightforward. Okay, so uh, good sure. to see you back in for yeah. 2023. We nearly said Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy it's New like Year. Twenty second of February <laughs> already. But uh, take care. Maybe see you in a fortnight's time. Yes, All hopefully right. soon. Thanks so much. Beth Air and Aredia are your international lawyers based on the Costa Blanca. We've been assisting expats for over a decade with laws to protect assets and look after your loved ones, and continue to do so in post-Brexit Spain. For advice on tax, wills and inheritance, immigration or real estate, call 965-480-737.